Hi and welcome back on the water. I'm Captain Rod and what you see going on behind me is what happens on High Rock here almost every weekend. This is a weigh-in for a striper tournament that was held today. These guys put their boats in at six this morning. They're getting ready to find out who's going to be the winner. Let's take a look. Most of the fish we'll see weighed in today will be either eaten for dinner tonight or frozen for meals later this winter. But two guys fishing today feel it's important to try and keep these fish alive and they're able to do that with the tall cylinder you see in the front of their boat. It's called a striper tube, and the fish is actually placed vertically on his nose in order to make this system work. It might seem strange that we put these fish in head first in the striper tube, but it goes back to the tuna tubes. You put them in head first, it messes up their equilibrium, and it actually calms the fish down. If you put it in the, striper, in the bait tank to keep it alive or in a live well, the fish will turn upside down and they'll actually suffocate. The fish have got to be moving, so when they're on their nose with 1,100 gallons per minute of water going through their gills, it actually simula simulates that fish swimming. Uh, in the past, everybody has always thought that when you catch a striper, that um, you can't release him. And we have proven to most of the people out here that you can release the fish, you just gotta understand the fish and understand how to take care of the fish and we probably have a 85 to 90 percent survival rate of all the fish that we catch. When we catch these fish and put them in the tube, they're actually stressed and the lactic acid is built up in the fish's body and that actually causes muscle spasms. Put them in this tube and keep them for a matter of an hour and when you get them out they're actually stronger than they were when you caught the fish out of the lake and that, that's what helps the survival rate of these fish and instead of just releasing them straight back into the water, sometimes we'll actually hold the fish a little while, even if we're gonna cull it, and we let it go and the fish does great. If more people would do this, the uh, wildlife wouldn't have to stock near as many fish. Now, if you wanna take fish home and eat them, that's understandable, but don't just kill them for the sake of killing them. Folks, almost all bass boats these days are equipped with live wells that'll allow you to keep your largemouth bass alive during tournament day so you can release them at the end of the day. And catch and release has become the norm in largemouth bass tournaments. With the advent of the striper tube and new technology like it, now it's possible to keep lots bigger fish alive and catch and release is growing in all species. And here is an example of two guys. This is grassroots conservation. This is two guys that are doing everything they can personally to make sure that this lake has fish for their kids and your kids to catch somewhere down the road. And by the way, they're uh, champions for the year, as a matter of fact, too, and let their fish go. So, great ending to a really good story. I'm Captain Rod. I'll see you right here on the water.